Well, hello everybody. Welcome back to another awesome mental health check. Your struggle is part of your story, so celebrate every victory. Yeah. Anyways, I know that you guys can see again that Mandy is not here. So again, I just want to reiterate that she is on full bed rest right now as per her doctor's instructions. Um, like many of you know, um, Mandy is my professional with regards to mental health things because she's taken course upon course upon course upon course of all of these mental health things. And for myself, I'm the professional on the side of I am a pastor. But um, basically what I do on the side of things is I do the spiritual side and she does the professional side. So I'm trying to do sort of both right now. So please forgive me if I'm not saying exactly the right words. That's, I mean, it happens sometimes because I, I don't know all of the exact words. I just know what I have gone through, what I have lived through, and how I was able to make it through things without taking the courses, without even knowing that I had things. It wasn't until later on in life that I was um diagnosed with high-functioning anxiety. And when I say diagnosed, I say that loosely because... At that time, there was no such thing as a diagnosis of that. Uh, I was just told that I had really serious anxiety and uh, it was probably like a high functioning type of thing. So that's what I had to go on many years ago. So I've been living with that and trying to figure out what works for me, what works to help me through things. And essentially, that's the type of thing that we try to do on this channel for you guys is give you as many different tips and tricks and little things like that that can help you guys through whatever it is that you're going through. And you don't have to take everything that we say. Absolutely not. We, I'm just saying we just are giving information to help people through things. We are, are very desperate. Both Mandy and I are very desperate to break the stigma of mental health. And that seems to slowly be coming off. But now there's like a quite a, well, I shouldn't say now, there's always been, but there's quite a stigma in the Christian community. So those of you that watch that are Christians, yeah, guys, it's up to us as Christians to help break this stigma, to help stop this stigma from um, taking root and hold of people's lives in the Christian community. There's a lot of people, um, those of you that are not part of the Christian community, that think that they're not allowed to feel, you know, any kind of mental health issues. They're not allowed to get sick. They're not allowed to this, that, or the other thing because then they're, then it basically says that they're not trusting that God is going to heal them. Well, guys, I'm here as a pastor to tell you that, yeah, God absolutely heals. Absolutely, because he has done it with me. But also, if you're not in that place, then you're not in that place yet. And it's something that you have to learn to work up towards. And so that's why that Mandy and I do this little uh, mental health check thing for you guys just to remind you that every walk of life can go through whatever it is that you may be going through, whatever struggle you may be going through. So again, not to trigger anybody. Absolutely, we don't want to trigger anybody. But we want to just share with you guys that you're not alone and that you are loved. And there are people out there that actually do, do, absolutely do care and want to to help you guys walk through help you give get skills say for instance um like for myself for instance i'm just gonna because i i know myself so i'm able to use myself as an example um when i was a younger person going through mental health issues and stuff like that i 
I didn't have money. My parents didn't have money. Then later on when we got married, when or when I got married to my husband, we didn't have a lot of money. I mean, those of you that are just freshly married or thinking about getting married, you don't always have a ton of money right at the beginning of everything. So, you know, I had to learn different things on my own. And I know this might freak you guys out a little bit, but we didn't really have access to internet and stuff like that until let's see my my eldest daughter is going to be 22 and she was just about a year no she yeah she was just about a year old when we got our first computer think about that and we got the first wi-fi that we ever had so she's going to be 22 so think about that 21 years that's how old my daughter was. So for 21 years, I've only had access to really to Wi-Fi or to the internet, that type of thing. So, you know, there was not necessarily a lot of stuff out there yet telling me how to deal with things. It was just little, literally trial and error of what worked for me. And there were lots of things, like I read lots of books, self-help books and, and whatnot. And there were lots of things where it was like, oh, you should never do that and blah, blah, blah. So I bought into that for a very long time. I was scared. I lived in anxiety quite desperately because I was like, well, how do I do that? How do I deal with that? Because nobody is supposed to know about this because I'm a Christian. Guys, that's what stigma is. And it's the same thing in the world where we talk about um, the stigma of mental health. We need to start breaking those stigmas and remember that we're all human beings on this planet, on this earth, and we're all <clears throat> excuse me, we're all trying to learn how to deal with things, okay? So I have something that um, I wanted to share with you guys. Now, it's the last teaching in what I have been teaching you guys, okay? It's the last one. And next week, I'm going to be dealing with a little bit more. It's It's actually talking more about anxiety, okay? So next week and for a number of weeks, I believe it's five or six um, different teachings about anxiety. And I felt like it was important because that's something that I know very well is anxiety. And it just so happens that this last teaching right now that I'm going to teach you guys or share with you guys is on anxiety. A few seconds ago, I was talking about how do I blah, 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 right? And that's something that those of us that live in anxiety. Now, um, for those of you that have like a high functioning anxiety like myself, one of the big things is you constantly berate yourself. You constantly look at yourself and think to yourself, I, I will never be able to do that. And so you overdo everything in order for it to be perfect as we think. And I was actually just sharing that with my husband a few minutes ago because you guys, a lot of you guys know that I have MS and most of the time I'm okay, but there are a lot of times that I struggle with my my physical health, like struggle to be able to accomplish the things that I used to be able to do. All of a sudden I can't do them. And that brings my anxiety level way up. And so I have to pray a lot and say, okay, I can't help that. I can't help that. Everything that I've done, I can't help. I can't, I can't. Like, it's just, it's just part of who I am. And so I had to, you know, or I still have to continually tell myself that it's okay. It's okay that I can't like vacuum everything or vacuum everything and mop everything. And like, I was like crazy for it because I was just sharing with my husband that earlier when I used to clean in our house as much, like I, I still clean, obviously, but my husband does a lot more now than then um, I used to just do everything because he worked out of the house and I had a day home and taking care of my kids. And I said to him that, you know, I would, I was the type of cleaner that was like, what if, so what if so-and-so looks in this area, I better have that clean. So, I mean, there was not a corner of my home. There was not an area ever that did, that wasn't like dust free, clean, like, perfection I felt like in my in my mind 
because I was so afraid that somebody would look there and see that human beings live here, that people live here. And that's where we need to, you know, not let our anxiety take over so hard that we're like basically killing ourselves. Because I remember, you know, I'd be running a day home and I would do all of these things, clean everything, and people would come over and they wouldn't look in those spots. They wouldn't even care. And that was really hard on me because then I had to deal with that. So if you have been in that position, I think that this little teaching will help you guys. So it starts off as, how will I tackle my to-do list? What if I fail? How will this situation play out? What does the future hold? And that I will promise you that that is the things that I thought in my spirit a lot. And and I'm not going to lie to you and say that I don't struggle with those things because I still struggle with them a lot, like so much. But I physically, my body physically won't let me do those things anymore. Having the MS, I have had so many health challenges over the past little while that it's it blows my mind. And in so many ways, I've prayed and I've asked God, well, why? Why can't I do these things? And, you know, in my spirit, I just really keep feeling like, well, maybe you need to slow down. Maybe it's time for you to let me do the things. You know how I've shared many times the scripture that says, take my yoke upon you because my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's what Jesus says to us. And I will admit for my whole life, I've just, I remember that scripture, but I don't necessarily, or I didn't necessarily hold on to it because it was like, oh, I can do this. But then when you're, you're faced with a challenge where you can't, like, for instance, what Mandy's going through, Mandy has been independent her whole life. She has done things, um, her whole life, no problems, no questions asked, but now she's really, really struggling and her physical body is, is in bad shape. And she, like I said, she's been on bed rest because her hips and her back, and she's at a point where sometimes like all she has to do is just reach for something like that. And all of a sudden she's hurt herself again. So, you know, that can be a pretty scary thing to deal with. And it can give you anxiety. It can give you a lot of those things that you maybe have fought your whole life to not experience, right? So let me just finish teaching this, this teaching to you guys. It says, worry and anxiety can be crippling. It could come from a variety of sources, family, relationship, or battling through the very real challenge of an anxiety disorder, which is what I have dealt with my whole life. At the end of the day, it's all the enemy's attempt to blind us from seeing God at work in our lives, which is exactly the things that I was just saying to you guys, that God has been saying to me as I've been praying about, well, why can't I do this? Why can't I do that? I used to be able to do it. And why can't I can't? And I just keep, you know, playing this narrative over and over. And then God just says to me, because maybe it's time for you to let me do things. It's not always the easiest thing to do. So let's carry on. When we allow anxiety to grip our hearts and minds, in pers in, it pushes out gratitude and peace. It causes us to doubt the love of our Heavenly Father, the stuff that He has for us, the love that He has for us. It causes us to doubt God, period. And I didn't even realize it. I mean, the things that I'm learning from all of this, it, you know, you guys may be learning it just as quickly as I am. I'm 51 years old and I am just really starting to learn these things because I have fought this my whole life. I have fought it. And even like I said, over the past number of years, I've fought it saying, no, I am going to be able to be healed and I'm going to be better. Well, slowly but surely I haven't been and I've been struggling with my health. So learning to live with that anxiety and learning to let God do the things that he needs to do in my life can be a challenge for me for sure. When we worry, there are our sorry, where is our focus on our lack of his sufficiency? Huh, interesting. On God, 
Paul reassures us in Philippians 4, 6 to 8, and let me just read this to you. To keep our focus on him in times of worry, to lay our anxieties before Christ in prayer, picking up his peace and focusing on the things that are noble, pure, lovely, and praiseworthy. That is a huge one. So let me just read that actual scripture or a scripture to you that comes from 1 Peter 5, 7. And it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Wow. So if God cares for you and all of our anxieties, all of our fears, all of the things that we think that we have to accomplish, if we could just cast those on him because he cares for us, then the change can happen in us where we start to realize that we can't do everything. There's a YouTuber that I follow often. And if you're interested, um, it's the Wadsworth, I believe it's called Kimberly Wadsworth or the Wadsworth family. And I love her motto. She always says, I'm doing the best that I can. I'm only going to do what I can do. She has five little children and a home and a husband and all of these things. And no, things are not absolutely perfect. And I think that that's what I love about her because I've learned so much to see that it is okay. And you don't have to kill yourself. You only can do what you can do. Do the best that you can do and then leave the rest. It's not, it's not important. So for instance, on my own side of things, cleaning every single orifice in my house and then have people come over and they don't even look there and that would hurt my feelings because I'm like, gosh, I cleaned that. Don't you just want to come and see all the spots that I cleaned? You know what? It is neither here nor there. People don't care. They really, really don't care. Now think about it when you have gone over to somebody else's place, if you've been able to do that, if you have agoraphobia and you haven't gone over to somebody's place, but you've seen places on maybe video chat or something, think about it. Do they take you to every single spot? No, they don't. Do you go and look at every single spot? Most likely you don't. And if you do, stop it because it's not your business. It's not for you to worry about. Worry about what you can deal with in yourself and do what First Peter says, cast all your anxieties on him, meaning God, because he cares for you. All right, guys, I love you guys so much. I hope that you guys are doing good or doing well. And I just, I will just continue to pray for you guys. Thanks again so much for just you know, tracking with us as we go through this time. We appreciate you guys. You are loved. Bye for now.